Cleaning up old jackknives. Welcome to the channel, folks. I recently bought the contents of a room in an auction. There were things I wanted, but I got a few other things in there, too. Uh, and I got this basket that was in the bottom of the... Uh, another basket. And lo and behold, I look in the bottom of... Uh, I guess it was actually a shoebox. So it was just a regular old shoebox. And I start digging around the bottom of it, and it's full of knives. So it turns out that the uh, auction, the person that was had passed away, was an eBayer. And I got his honey hole of eBay stuff, so it was like a starter kit for eBay. So I guess other people didn't notice the things or know what they're worth. Obviously, old knives may or may not be worth a lot really depends. Sometimes they're worth a dollar, um, sometimes a hundred dollars. So anyhow, I thought I would just take a knife and clean it up. One of the uglier ones, if it'll even open. So that one's just mostly dirty. This is going to be a nice one. Okay, so this one, the kit even came with a loop because there was some jewelry in it. Boker, B-O-K-E-R brand. Made in the USA, the tree brand, they call it. So, that's what I'm going to do. And I'm going to take and turn it into something like this. This is a knife that was uh, pretty ugly. And I certainly am not going to make out time-wise, but uh, I'll turn it into a knife like that. This is a uh, Remington. <clears throat> Turns out this actually has bison horn. This is not wood. It's bison horn. I'm going to work on this case. So it's not terribly bad <clears throat> it's marked case xx in one line and usa on the next line so what i'm going to do is take a solvent wd-40 and just wet the blade down And I have a little pile of sandpaper here. I'm going to start out with this um, emery cloth. Not sure what this is, maybe 200 grit, something like that. And I was actually using this. This worked out really good as a little table. I'm not a knife guy. I carry a knife, but not a knife guy. Uh, thing I like about doing it, when you just get random lots, like I do, you never know what you're going to find that you, I get a little OCD on the research end. So, for example, I just had a Zodiac watch. So I learned that you know the watches that have the bezel on the outside that rotates? I guess Zodiac's the one that came up with that back in the 50s for a dive watch. And they can be quite valuable. I'm getting into the knives. Now, cleaning the knife, I don't know if you can see all the little marks that are still on there. You never actually, uh, you don't take out a scratch. You don't sand out a scratch. What you actually do 
is you sand the surrounding material away down to the level of the scratch. So you're doing quite a bit of harm to the thing. Now, you'll see a guy go up to a belt sander, clean up both sides, make it look nice. Um, if you got the talent and the touch, that's probably not a bad way to do it. But <clears throat> if you don't have the talent and the touch, you're going to take off a whole lot more material than what you want to do. So another thing, as we work along, we want to clean the uh, clean the action back here. And we do that just by working it back and forth, put the solvent in there. Uh, I have some liquid WD-40 in a bottle. Uh, that would work. Uh, can be any, any lube. WD-40 is just nice. Everybody loves it. I'm not a big fan, but everybody loves it. So just work it back and forth like that and flush it out a little bit. Now this is only a two-bladed knife, so it goes a little bit easier. You might want gloves on if you're afraid of WD-40. You might want real gloves if you're afraid of getting cut. Cut myself twice already doing these. This is a part I want to look really nice because when it's closed, it's going to be exposed. Go back to my emery cloth. See if I get it right like that. Okay. So let's get this blade. It gets rid of most of it. I don't know if you can see. It's looking better. show you something here so this knife I'm working on is an old case I don't know I haven't looked up the vintage yet but <clears throat> this knife this knife I have identified as a Cataraugus knife it's uh, unmarked it's supposed to be marked right there Okay, it's supposed to be marked right there, but there's no mark. But on the other side is part number 3265. I was able to find this exact knife on eBay. And it was marked as a Cataraugus knife. And if you compare, compare the Cataraugus knife with the case knife, see the difference? This bar or shield or whatever looks the same. And this is a Cataraugus, this is a case. And ironically, I just saw this now. This case knife actually has a number on it similar to the number on this Cataraugus knife. So I guess the Cataraugus is really a predecessor to, uh, to case. Cataraugus Knife Company in Little Valley was co-owned by the Case Brothers until about 1920. 
when they moved to Bradford, PA, and opened their own company. It's about 30 miles away. So I'm going to go with the 1200 on here right now. Sanded. Okay, and that's how it looks. I'm going to call this blade sanded. How's that? So, next thing we'll move on to is inside the knife. And chances are it's got some grit and gunk. What I've been doing is just taking, uh, skipping the emery cloth and just starting out at the 500. I got an old, an old piece right here. And I've got this, this is like a China copy of a Victronics pocket knife. So I'm just going to get in there with this and uh, use this to clean as much as I can. Now we see we got uh, see these three they're all brass. Some of these old knives they get lint and other debris. Built up on them, so you can see that it's just lint. flashlight um, I actually keep this flashlight here I have it so I can look down inside so if that helps if that makes it so you can see anything like that because otherwise it's just I'll take like a <clears throat> nice folded up piece. It's like doubled and doubled again. And the the edge is all kind of ratty and I'll go down there and try and get the bottom because the bottom is just the spring. So if somebody looks in there, again, you, you don't want it grungy. And that spring is going to have rust on it. The sides, the brass is just a uh, little corrosion, but the uh, the spring you want to knock the rust off of. And again, it can be pitted, so you just don't want to get too crazy. Okay, so that does that. Now, we'll move to the outside. We'll go back to our emery cloth, and we'll just run down the back of it. We're getting there. <clears throat> this spring has got a little more pitting here, which, like I say, uh, <coughs> To clean a pit or a scratch, you don't remove the pit or the scratch, you remove the material around it. If you go with a 500. Yep.
In fact, we'll hit this with a 500 so we don't forget. Hit it with some solvent. got some crunchiness to it so when you find a problem just go ahead and address it because when you get old like me you might forget so just get in there and work out that problem and of course then you might forget where you're going next okay so I want this to be able to snap like that Okay, so the next step is going to be the outside. Now, that's nice. Let's see what these look like. Not sure what they are, bolsters or something like that. So, we'll hit them with... 500. Right there. Make sure I. Okay. Hundred on everything. Yep, same thing. So. Grab a piece of twelve hundred. So this one has obviously run into something. If you can see that corner. Okay. So what I'm gonna do I'll get a look at it. Yeah, somebody must have used it like that. So what I'm going to do is I have a file. So I'm going to file the burr away. The steadier you hold it, the better you're going to do. You don't want to round it. You want to try to maintain the same profile. Rather have it a little smooth than having that sharp edge. Remember, this got to be in your pocket. Back to the twelve hundred. Okay. 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 That's that's it for that part. I'm going to try a little experiment right here on this. If you can see those. I'm going to see if some vinegar will take that out. I don't know if that's a marked difference.
that looks any cleaner. And this is my buffing wheel. I bought this at Harbor Freight. Uh, it's just a regular buffing wheel. It comes with the with white. Then for a separate fee, you can buy some other colors. Um, this is used with loose leaf buffer. Finish on. Okay, this does metals. See how this looks. I don't know. What do you think? A lot better than I started out with. I'll give you a little before. Okay. So that's that side. I'm not sure which side I showed actually. Is it this side? So there, it looks pretty good. Okay, so I want to look up Case Knife. It is still produced. You can buy it for about $54. I've got this figured out. So here's the tang mark. You can see it says Case XX on one line, followed by USA, and then below it, is a single dot. In 1970, there were 10 dots. Each year, a dot was dropped, so one dot would indicate the year 1979. And then on the opposite side, 62032 indicates <clears throat> the six says this can be Delrin or Bone. Um, looking at it, I think I can see some coarseness to it, so I think it's bone. But it's Delrin or bone. Uh, the 2 means it's a two-bladed knife. And the 032 is a pattern. And 032 means it's a... is usually referred to as Texas Jacks or premium jack knives. This is called a clip master mm -hmm. blade. This is called a... Pen secondary. They each have their own spring. And the design has been around since prior to 1940. This is still a great jackknife at 42 years old. Look, Look at the shine on that. Job clearing it up. And so we will just put it over here. With the other ones. So thanks for watching, folks. And that's the way I do it.